I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I won't do all the dances. I will spare you the torture. But as you guessed from my introduction and by the lovely words of Miss Beyonce, I'm a single lady. No ring on this finger. So I'm 31 years old. I have my PhD in history. I would consider myself very successful in my career choice. I absolutely love my job. And I'm pretty much happy. What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. It's Eddie once again. And today's topic is today's video is a reaction video i'm reacting to a video which was a reaction video yeah so this lady whose channel i follow on youtube uh most of her content talks about women and their femininity like she's trying to educate women and how to be feminine it's a good channel i'll 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 put a link in the subscription below so that you can check it out, more especially if you're a woman, if you want to be feminine, because no guy wants a woman who's masculine, almost every man wants to have a woman who's feminine, if, uh, if a woman is masculine, it feels like you're dating a fellow guy. And no man wants to, no straight man wants to date a fellow guy. That's why most men go for feminine women. So this lady's channel is great. She's teaching women how to be feminine. If you want that, you can check out her content. Yeah. So let's get into it. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rebecca. And today I'm going to be reacting to a TED Talk from about seven years ago. It's called Female Educated and Perpetually Single. And the speaker's name is Erica Marin. So I'm sure you guys have probably seen this video. If you have, please let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, but I will be reacting to that today. And yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Introduction and by the lovely words of Miss Beyonce, I'm a single lady, no ring on this finger. So I'm 31 years old. I have my PhD in history. I would consider myself very successful in my career choice. I absolutely love my job. And I'm pretty much happy about everything all the time. But I'm not married. I'm not engaged. I'm not even close. So according to traditional gender norms, I can tell from her body language that she is very uncomfortable. Now, speaking on stage is very difficult. I've done it so many times in my life, in my career, and I know it's very uncomfortable. You, you know, your blood pressure is up, you are sweating and all this other stuff. But just based off of her body language alone and what she's saying, the audio doesn't match the visual. She's saying one thing, and her body is completely saying something else. I can tell that she's uncomfortable, that she is unhappy, even though she's telling us that she's happy in her career choice. She's saying that it's because of society, but I honestly feel like she's disappointed in herself as well. She's putting her body in, her expressions are not matching, what she's saying verbally. It might be for the audience so that they understand this is what she's gonna talk about. But right off the bat, I really don't think that she's happy. I think that she is feeling the pressure, but we will continue to watch to see what she's gonna say. And I feel a lot of pressure to get married and settle down. And I want to. I wanna find someone who's right for me. I want to find someone to share my life and love and experiences with. You know, eventually get married and pop out a few spawn. Typical. I'm not quite sure why it hasn't worked out for me yet. Um, obviously, my educational and career choices have forced me to move around a little bit in the past few years. But even still, I'm fun. I'm charming. I'm not completely hideous. In my personal opinion, the reason why I think that she's been single is because 
she's prioritized her career over finding a mate, over finding a husband and eventually getting married and having kids. And that is the consequence of putting career over relationships. Men don't have this issue. A lot of men go to college, they have higher education, finding a mate over finding a husband and eventually getting married and having kids. And that is the consequence of putting career over relationships. Men don't have this issue. A lot of men go to college, they have higher education, they do their PhD and they date at the same time. Men have an easier time doing this and they're more successful with getting the career, getting the education, and still finding a wife and having kids all at the same time. For some reason, modern feminism has taught women that they can't have those things at the same time. I need to pour everything into my career, I have to pour everything into my education in order for me to get it right. Then at that point, I'm going to be more attractive to men so that I can settle down, so that I can have kids. And unfortunately, that is not the case whatsoever. If you're going to advance in your career, if you're going to put everything into your career, know that that is taking away from your relationships and vice versa. There's nothing wrong with having a good job and providing for yourself, but at the same time, not achieving you know, CEO status or COO status. It's okay to not advance in your career as much if you want to prioritize family and children. Uh, I'm not high maintenance. I love cooking. I like watching sports. I like having sex. So I've got a lot of pros in the minds of the male of our species, if you know what I'm saying. I think I'm a pretty decent catch. And in terms of what I want for a guy, well, when I was young, I created a long list of all the things that I wanted in my future husband. And there was. See, this is the problem that women create for themselves is that they make this extensive 50 item list with all the things a man has to have. And a lot of these things that I'm reading off of this list, and you can also read them yourself, is very materialistic. Have a nice car, have a boat, likes to cook, likes bad TV. These are things that don't necessarily matter in marriage. But this is what she's saying, my future husband. She wants her future husband to have this whole 50 part list down packed before she signs the dotted line. And unfortunately, it's not gonna happen. These are unrealistic expectations. And if you're going into a relationship with the list this long, just know you will not find this person. So ladies, having a list like this is not beneficial to you because all you're doing is setting yourself up for disaster. So you need to prioritize the things that actually matter in relationships, not this extra stuff, okay? I just wanna make that super clear because this right here is a problem. Has all sorts of personal qualities and physical attributes and just general skills or uh, possessions that I thought would be useful. Possessions. Well, as I'm getting older, this list keeps getting smaller and smaller. The first thing to go was all of those materialistic things. I didn't really care about those. The next thing to go was the skills. Uh, they would be useful, but I don't really need someone that's good at computers and cars and construction. So as the list started to dwindle. So check out this lady's unrealistic list and how it started dwindling down the order she started getting. I wouldn't be surprised if she's still single up to now. This, that's something I have to look into. But I'm sure the list is now, that list is even zero. She can settle for anything now. Because the, the men she wants, wants uh, want way younger women than her. It's just how it is. You can't run away from nature. Yeah. Well, as I'm getting older, this list keeps getting smaller. 
smaller and smaller. The first thing to go was all of those materialistic things. I didn't really care about those. The next thing to go was the skills. Uh, they would be useful, but I don't really need someone that's good at computers and cars and construction. So as the list started to dwindle, the problem was I, I started to feel like I had given up some things that were really important. I was going to have to settle for somebody that it wasn't going to make me happy and maybe wasn't going to treat me very well. This whole notion of settling and not making you happy and not going to treat you well, that's a bunch of crap. When you have these high expectations, when you have these high standards and you expect a man to tick off all your boxes, then of course you're going to be unhappy. Of course you're going to be unsatisfied. How can you tell someone that you have to be perfect from the beginning to get into a relationship. That's why this woman and a lot of women are single, because you prioritize things that don't actually matter. Also, what are you bringing to the table? What things are you working on? What is your list for yourself that you want your future husband to know about you? We really have to think about this and be very understanding that it's not a one-way street. That's not just what she wants, it's what men want as well. Are you on the list for your future husband? Think about it. It's not a one-way street. So I backtracked and I came up with the most important thing to me. Okay, so I don't care if it's superficial and shallow. I want somebody that's taller than me. I am five foot ten. I am not a small girl. All right. I don't want somebody that's going to make me feel any bigger than I already am. I want somebody that shares my political beliefs, which is not important at all to some people. But I dated guys with different political commitments, and I realized that. I don't want to argue. And I cannot be James Carville and Mary Madeline. I can't do it. Uh, I want somebody that's smart. I'm smart. And I want somebody I can talk to. Uh, they don't have to have a PhD necessarily, but they can't be threatened by mine. Basically just somebody that has a general sense of intellectual curiosity and a love for learning. I need somebody that's ambitious and hardworking. I can't respect you if you don't have goals. And then, of course, you know, the general sense of humor, kind, honest, laid back, non-smoker, likes cats, etc. So, I don't think that this list is unreasonable. And yet, here I stand. So check out. When girls are young, for the past few decades, there's, there's this narrative that, has, that has been pushed. It has been pushed on women that they should concentrate more on education, they should, con they should concentrate more on school before they settle down. But if you take into consideration, nothing, re nothing has ever really changed when it comes to what men prefer. Before I explain what I mean by what men prefer is, let me give an example. Our parents back in the day, they used to get married at 18, 19, 20. But all that changed when that narrative was pushed that women should concentrate more on education before they get married or before they start having children. So this thing that was pushed, it was nicely done, that it worked. For the past few decades, a lot of women started getting educated. But what started happening is that most educated women started having trouble to find a man to marry. And if you check the statistics, you find that most educated women are not married. They've got the money, they've got everything, but they're not married. The reason is simple. The reason is simple. Uh, biologically or scientifically, or men have always been attracted to youthful women. That's why our parents back in the day used to get married at 18, at 20, 
before 25. The talk goes back to biology. If as a woman you are youthful, it means you are fatal. The fertility levels are high. And when they are high, it means you give a man children. So, most men will say they will smash a girl who's hot and cute at 30. But marrying or settling down with that person is usually low. The percentages of men who settle with a 30 year, 30 year old or older, the percentage is low. They don't even know why it's like that. But subconsciously, every man wants to be with somebody who's youthful. As a woman, if you reach 25 and you go up, you start going up, let's say 25 and above, your fertility levels start going down. So the older you get, if you get at 30, the fertility levels go down. If you reach 35, the chances of having kids as a woman goes to 3%. And the man wants to be biologically or evolutionally speaking, evolution, whatever, speaking, uh, a man wants to be somebody who's youthful. Just like women wants to be with an older, mature man. A woman won't settle with a 21 year old, but they will settle with a 30 year old and above because naturally, or biologically, they are attracted to that. So that's just how it is. Let's continue the video. Also, what I've picked up from this video is that I feel like she's already given up. And that's just the sense that I get from, again, her body language, how she's carrying herself. She doesn't seem confident in what she's saying, but she's saying it. When someone appears as if they are, have given up, then that is what's projected onto society. That's what's projected onto men. When you're out and about living your life in the world and you are jaded, if you are angry, bitter, if you are down on yourself, it's going to show. So this is why you're probably perpetually single as well because you've given up. And ladies, if you show up outside with a frown on your face, with, a sh with your shoulders shrugged in, with your body closed up, you are projecting the fact that you've given up and that you don't care. So why would a man care about you if you don't even care about you? It doesn't take a genius, it doesn't take a highly intellectual person to perceive that. If you carry yourself well, if you're smiling, if you're laughing, if you're giving off good energy, you're gonna get that reciprocated. If you are putting out bad energy, if you're putting out, you know, resting beef, right? That's what you're gonna get. You're gonna get people that ignore you, men and women. People don't wanna be around sad people, angry people, bitter people. They wanna be around people that are going to lighten the mood, not bring it down. BuzzFeed came out with this list a few months ago in August, and it's 24 things single people are tired of hearing. Boy, it is spot on. So, for example, how are you still single? You're so great. I know, right? Don't you ever get lonely? Don't you want kids? Uh, yeah, duh, obviously. Uh, you should try online dating. That's my favorite. <laughs> I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, don't worry, you'll find someone. Just don't turn into a crazy cat lady. Too late on that one. Uh, you should let me set you up. You know, the reason why women are ending up 31, 35, 40 single is because they were intentional about everything else in their life other than dating, other than finding a man, other than settling down. And it's because society has preached to women specifically that you should be focused on your career, that you should be focused on on your education, that you be focused on everything else other than finding a man. And then these women are waking up in their 30s saying, well, I have everything, 
that I've worked for, that I've desired, that I've wanted, but where are all the men? And it's because you've poured all of your energy into work, you poured all of your energy into education, and you've neglected, you've been, you put your blinders on, and you forgot that there were other people in the world other than you. And this is why you are tired of hearing these questions. If you were intentional on dating, if you were intentionally going on dates and putting yourself out there while you were in your 20s, then you would not be single. You would not create these crazy expectations that you want men to do and to have and to to come into the relationship with. And you would find someone that works with you, that will grow with you, that will be with you. If you want marriage, if you want kids, if you want any sort of relationship, you need to prioritize these things. I'm not saying don't have a career. I'm not saying don't have an education, but make space for both. Make space for a relationship. Make space for a man. And don't push that person away because you want to focus on your career. Because your career won't help you in your 50s when you're alone. That's all. Yeah, so in this narrative of women being pushed to go to school, to put school first before marriage. Everything was well. Not until it really hit, it really hit it. Like a lot of ministers, a lot, sorry, a lot of women started making money. A lot of women started getting good jobs. But they started struggling to get a man. Because the other thing is, the more educated, the more money you have, the less options you have and you find that as a woman if you make a lot of money you want to meet a man who makes a lot of money you want to meet a man who's a one percent or one to twenty percent but the thing is a twenty percent a man wants to be with the cutest or hottest women and the cutest and hottest women are those who are in their early twenties because they, they are at their peak of the sexual market value. So that's why you find a lot of women who are above 30, educated and all that, are single. Some pretend to be, some pretend to be happy, but deep down they, fr they are frustrated. Check out this Kevin Samuels video. This clip from Kevin Samuels. It hit the nail on the head. Check it out. Oh yeah, Melanie, I know what you're saying. Um, and I'm going to tell you, man, I have seen more. I went to Houston for that pretty professional problems thing. I've seen more attractive women, pretty women, beautiful women who are successful and look like they got it all together. They're rocking the best Chanel, got on Louboutin. They're driving Range Rovers and G-Wagons and, and, and AMGs. They're living in high rises. They're getting facials and, and hot girl. That's, no, and they still like, and they're crying in the shower because they want somebody to hug them and, and, and take that shit off of them. I don't know, man. I don't think I'll just be talking shit. I'm not just talking shit because I can risk saying some things that other guys can't risk. And the thing is, ladies, if you want that, you're going to have to risk being vulnerable a little bit to allow the man to come in and do what he needs. Click like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. If you click like and comment it helps with the algorithm and that helps lead to the growth of the channel and all that starts with you by clicking like or comment yeah so this channel is here to help out women men to be better it's not like i'm hating i'm just somebody who's holding people accountable like even me, if I make a mistake or if I make wrong choices, I have to be held accountable. As a woman, you, women usually don't like being told. They are the real thing. They like being told what they want to hear. So channels like this and other channels, the Red Pew channels out there, they're just trying to better the world, right? 
how can you build accountable so that you can make realistic choices and decisions yeah before I end the video you know what I want to do please like comment and subscribe we need this channel to grow if you love the content I post then help me to grow the channel so as usual I'm gonna end the video by saying get up dust up go win